we are a chosen generation We've been called for to show His excellence All I require for life God has given me For I know who I am I know who God says I am What He says I am Where He says I'm at I know who I am God bless you, my beloved brethren. I want to thank God for another privilege given to us by the Almighty God and the great grace that has sustained us to be part of today's Bible studies. I want to believe that every one of you, you are hungry to receive something fresh from God, to receive fresh revelation, fresh manner from heaven that will strengthen you in every aspect of your life. It is my prayer that the God that you seek will speak and will reveal himself to you in this service in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 84 and verse number 7, they go from strength to strength, every one of them that appeared before God in Zion. Therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever you are connecting to today's broadcast, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, as God begin to send this word to us today, as God begin to speak his mind and his revelation to us in this service today, I pray that every part of your life, every part of your soul, every part of your spirit shall be renewed and be strengthened by God in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever represents present a weakness in your body. I pray that by the release of the word of God, and the power of God will terminate every weakness and the strength of the almighty God will envelop you on every side in the name of Jesus Christ. So it's always a great time coming to the presence of the Lord to receive fresh manna from heaven. In Psalm 1 to 2 and verse 1, the Bible says, I was glad when they said, come, let's go to the house of the Lord. So it's always a glorious and a joyful thing to gather together, even though we're not meeting in a cathedral. I want you to understand that God's presence is with us wherever you are connected from today. Just know that the presence of God is tabernacle with us. As far as God is concerned, we are in his presence and his glory and his power is all around us. So release your heart and release your faith and trust the Lord to release some Something afresh into your spirit today and it grace you on every side for greater exploit, preparing you to overcome the crisis of this season and launching you into realms of restoration and supernatural turnaround that will help you to fulfill the higher level promises that the Lord has promised us in this year 2020. I've come to let you know that whether the devil like it or not, at the end of all this crisis, the glory of God shall be made manifest. Just the same way at the end of every turning, the light will always shine. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, Christ. At the end of this season, every one of us will receive God's grace that will launch us into speedy breakthroughs in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for another privilege to come before you in this Bible study. The Bible says, for unto you shall the gathering of your people be, and no one can come unless the Father draw them. Father, Lord, for everyone that is part of today's broadcast, I know it is because you have given us the grace to connect it to it so as to receive revelation that you have prepared for us. Therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Bible says, while Peter speak this word, the Holy Ghost fell upon everyone that heard him. Acts chapter 10 and verse 44. Therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, as your word begin to come through my lips this hour, let everyone that is part of today's service, let the Spirit of the Lord come upon them. Father, Lord, impact them with fresh prevailing grace from above, with fresh anointing, with fresh glory, with fresh auction with fresh insight, with fresh strength, with fresh dominion in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, send the word that will impact your people. Send the word that will deliver your people. Send the word that will transform your people. Send the word that will grace your people. Send the word that will empower your people. Send the word that will move everyone forward. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we cry continuously unto you that let an end come to this pandemic that is terrorizing the world right now in the name of Christ. Father, as we are stepping down the wind already, as we are stepping down the strength of this virus already, let a final end come to read in the name of Jesus Christ. Once again, I decree concerning all members of Triophan Chapel, this virus shall not take anyone in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, protect your people. I cover all members of Triophan Chapel with the blood of Jesus. And everyone that is part and following up in this broadcast, no matter where they are connected from, I soak and I cover them all with the blood of Jesus Christ. No evil will prevail over their life. No attack will prevail over their life. No destruction will prevail over their life. Let your heart keep everyone 
that at the end of today's Bible study, everyone will return with fresh blessings upon their life and multiply grace on every side for greater exploit and greater breakthroughs. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Glory to the name of the Lord. In this Bible studies today, by the grace of God, I will be bringing you a message I title Unfolding the Prevailing Power of the Grace of God in the Journey of Life, Part 2. The Lord spoke to us on Sunday that this month of May and beyond shall be unto us our month of prevailing grace. The Lord said to us that His grace will prevail for us. And so throughout this month, we are trusting the Lord to renew and to increase His grace upon our life to prevail for us in every aspect we so desire as we go through this year, 2020. In the book of Zechariah chapter 4 and verse number 6 and 7, which is actually our Akko scripture for this month of May, the Bible says, He answered unto me and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord also Zerubbabel. It is not by might, not by power. But by my spirit, says the Lord. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? He said, you shall become a plain, and it shall come forth and break forth the earth stone with crying and shouting, saying, grace, grace unto it. Which means that the manifestation of the result, the exploit, the testimony, the breakthrough that God has ordained for us, who today we are the Zerubbabel of our time. The Bible said they are not going to come as a result of our power, as a result of our might, but His grace is going to make it work. And anything that wants to stand as a barrier, the power of the prevailing grace of God will break them down on every side. In the course of our teaching, we explain the definition and the mystery of grace using the life of Apostle Paul as our case study. And we define grace as the manifestation of the unmerited favor of God upon the life of men and women which empowers them to achieve and to command the kind of result that their natural strength and their natural capacity and their natural intellect cannot give unto them. If you want to hear more of that teaching and you want to get refreshing in your spirit, get to our YouTube channel, Triumphant Chapel London, and make sure that you refresh your mind as we go into the next phase today. So in this part two, by the grace of God, we're going to be looking at the manifestation of the grace of God in the life of men and women in scriptures. The practical proof of the manifestation of the grace of God. The practical manifestation of the grace of God in the life of men and women, which made the result they commanded unimaginable to people that were around them. Remember, the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1 and verse number 9, that there's nothing new other the song. The things that has been are the things we shall be. And the things which are done are the things which shall forever be. So there's nothing new other the song. So if God says he's going to manifest, he's going to release the manifestation of his prevailing grace upon our life in this season, there's nothing new about it. From time immemorial, God has always been manifesting his grace in the life of men and women, which translate them and change them and move them from shame to honor, from failure to unimaginable success. From penury and poverty to a world of abundance and prosperity. God has always manifested His grace in the life of men and women. We translate their poverty into great abundance. We translate their barrenness into supernatural fruitfulness. God has always manifested His grace in the life of men and women. We turn them from zero into heroes. Therefore, I've come to announce to you, because God has vowed to release the manifestation of His prevailing grace upon our life in this season, I decree that God is moving your life from the negative into the positives in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever you have been stranded, wherever you have been held bound, wherever you have been going back, I pray that the hand of the Lord, by the manifestation of His grace, will move you forward and turn this around for you in the name of Jesus Christ. All through scripture, no one ever had a counter with the prevailing grace of God that remained the same. 
That is why as time will permit us, we are going to be diving into scriptures to look at the names of people who nobody ever knew anything about, who never expected so much in their own life and from their life, who never thought that they were going to be people that would be a blessing to their world, who never knew that they are going to do great exploits, who never knew that their life was going to be a life of impact and testimony worldwide, that their life is going to provoke and manifest generational blessings because as far as they were concerned, they were just ordinary men and nothing much was working in their life. But when the grace of the Lord came upon their life, things began to turn from glory to glory. Breakthroughs begin to manifest on every side. Barriers begin to clear their way. The hand of the Lord was moving them irresistibly from one height to another height. That many of them today, their name has remained indelible in the history of humanity, not just in the kingdom. Their name have become names that people now identify with. Their result so touched the whole world, touched the life of men that upward it today. People are still reflecting on the exploit that was manifested in the life of this people. And when we look at scriptures, what made a difference in their life was simply the touch of the prevailing grace of God that came upon their life. Now, let's take our time now to examine the life of these precious people that found grace in their time and saw the manifestation of the grace of God upon their life. The first we are going to be talking about today is a man by name Abraham. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 12, as a matter of fact, reading from the book of Genesis chapter 11, we are going to find out that the Bible talks about a man whose name was Terah, who had three children. And among these three children was Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12, while Abraham was alone by himself, as an ordinary man, because if you look at what the Lord said to him, it means that at that time he was still squatting and living in his father's house. So there was nothing much actually going on in the life of Abraham until the grace of God came upon him. In Genesis chapter 12, the Bible makes us understand that one day the Lord looked from above, I'm sure, and said that this young man, I want to extend my grace upon him to help him prevail in the journey of life and help him to command the kind of exploit that nobody has ever thought about him, which Ibu himself has never thought about himself. Remember, it was at that time, Abraham's wife was considered to be a barren woman, Sarah. They had no child, there was no child coming. So Abraham was a man who didn't have much to talk about. But, in Genesis chapter 12, from verse number 1, the Bible says, And the Lord came unto Abraham and said unto him, Come on, leave your country and leave your kindred and leave your father's house. So that in case this grace begin to manifest, nobody will say that the reason why things they are pushing for you. No, no. But I will pour my grace upon you and the manifestation of that grace is going to bring you to the attention of everyone. And the Lord said unto him, leave your country, leave your kindred, leave your father's house, and come to a land that I will show unto you where the grace will begin to manifest. In verse 2, as a proof of the manifestation of that grace, this is what will happen. He said, and I will make you a great nation. I will make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless them that blesses you, and I will curse him that curses you. He said, in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And that's what the Bible says, and Abraham departed. Look at the voice of the grace of God that came upon him. The prevailing grace, remember we define this as the unmerited favor of God that is manifested in the life of a man and a woman that help them to do great things that the natural strength cannot do for them. So it is clear as at the time God came to Abraham, Abraham's natural strength could not do much for him. But when the Lord came down to him and poured his grace upon his life, ah, uh, beginning from that day, the Bible helps us understand that Abraham's life was turned around forever. He was moving from one level of breakthrough, moving from one level of glory to another. Things were turning around on every side. In the same man who used to be buried, the Bible now refers to him as a father of many nations and the same woman as mother of many nations. So that is exactly how the grace of God can turn the life of a man, can turn things around the man all over. Because the manifestation of the grace of God in the life of a man or woman and 
empowers them to prevail over every situation and prevail in the journey of life. So I want you to understand that every one of us need this grace of God upon our life. It is the dimension of the grace of God upon your life that will determine the dimension of results you are going to command in the journey of life. So you must be hungry for it. You must salivate for it. You must cry for it. You remember, he said, after the mountain and crushed down, he said he will come back with shouting and crying, grace, grace, unto it. So this time we should be crying for the manifestation of the grace of God upon our life. Abraham, from the day the grace of God came upon him, he prevailed, he manifested, he experienced breakthrough and turn around from that day forward up until the last time he was on the earth. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 24 from verse 1, and Abraham was old and well stricken in age and God has blessed him in all things. Abraham was old and well stricken in age and God has blessed Bless him in all things. God has blessed him in everything. Because from the day the grace of God comes upon your life, from the day the grace of God begins to manifest in your life, there's always going to be a supernatural exchange of operation in your life. God takes over and begins to work things out for you. And when God takes over, you can be sure that nothing can limit, resist, or break you down. Therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, judge the same grace that came upon Abraham I decree that double portion of that grace shall be manifested in your own life beginning from this month in the name of Jesus Christ. Shall manifest your family, manifest your finances, manifest your career, and as the Lord live it. The same way Abraham was broke, the same way Abraham was nobody, the same way Abraham was barren, but when the grace of God came, everything turned around for him. As for you, every area things are not working right now. I decree that the grace of God will turn things around for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, we saw another young man who was privileged to receive the grace of God upon his life. And the name of that young man is Saul, the son of Kish. The first time we saw the story of that young man in scripture was in 1 Samuel chapter 9. And what was said about him? The Bible says he went out with two of his father's servant in search for the father's animals that were missing. So they were wandering from one bush to another looking for his father's lost animal. And if you read that scripture very well, in 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse number 5, the Bible said that they have wandered and wandered and wandered in the forest so much that they could not find the animal. And Saul became frustrated because at some point in 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 5, he said to the other guy, he said, please, can we just stop searching for these things and let us go back home so that my father will not leave the animal and now begin to get worried about or maybe he would think that we have also gone missing as well. But they decided to take a step forward. I'm telling you, read that scripture. Immediately after that, they had contact with a man of God by name Samuel. And before they had that contact, the voice of the Lord came up to Samuel that I have released my grace upon a young man that is coming to me too in the next few minutes. Therefore, let him know that things have changed in his life. As far as the supernatural realm is concerned, he is no longer an ordinary man. God has elevated him because the grace of God has located him. And how do you find out? For the sake of time, if you read the book of 1 Samuel chapter 10, you will find out that the same man who was a wanderer, the same man who was frustrated and miserable in search for his father's lost animal, in 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verse number 1, that man was being commissioned as the overall king of Israel. Man, what the prevailing power of the grace of God. The Bible says, and Samuel took the vial of oil, and poured it upon the head of Saul and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be captain over his inheritance? The grace of God has located you, boy. You are no longer the same, man. Beginning from today, your story is turning around for greater testimony, for greater exploit. From this hour, you have been ordained to rule over this whole nation. What the manifestation of the grace of God. Powerful. The grace of God is able to turn a man's life around overnight. Changes things, break barrier, break solution, 
Tongue takes around and push you to the next level. Contrary to the imagination of men. I have come to announce to somebody today that no matter how frustrated your life has been, no matter how frustrated any aspect of your life has been, I decree that the grace of God that is coming to us this season will prevail for you and launch you into new realms of exploits and breakthroughs in the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, experience of the manifestation of the grace of God we shall be talking about today is the experience of a young lady called Adasa, also known as Esther. In the book of Esther chapter 2, we saw the background history of Adasa. In this scripture, we are made to understand that Esther was an orphan who had no father, who had no mother, and was being raised by her uncle. And the worst of it all is that all of them were the Jews that were taken away from Jerusalem by the Babylonian king and were held in captivity in the land of Babylon. But the Bible says the grace of the Lord came upon her that when Queen Vatshi, who was the wife of the king Ahuserus, when she misbehaved and they needed to replace her, a new queen was needed for the whole kingdom. The Bible says, by grace, Mordecai, who was the uncle of Esther, told Esther to also join in the parade. Maybe just enjoy the beauty pageant. But as they prepared for that, the Bible says, as soon as Esther joined in, she find grace with the people who were preparing them. Libra to Shagaga. When grace comes, no matter what name people call you, no matter what your family background may be, no matter what your prevailing situation may be, the grace of God has the power to turn things around. He said, I will overturn and overturn and overturn until I bring you to the stardom that I have ordained for you as God has spoken it. So, I have come to announce to you, don't allow your prevailing circumstance to blindfold you against your desire for the grace of God to be released upon your life. Cry for that grace. Ask the Lord that you need this grace to prevail in every aspect of your life in this month of May. Because if God says so, God will do so. God will not just say to us, I'm going to pour out my grace. My grace prevail for you because he just want to say it. The reason why we are doing today's teaching is to help you know that God has done in the life of other people before. So as to prepare your mind of faith to know that you are next online. You are next to receive the grace of God that will turn this around for you in every aspect of your life. Esther had it. And the Bible says, when they finally marched, all the ladies, all the young girls, both the indigenous and the strangers, every one of them that went in to see the king, all of them came out. But when Esther entered before the king, the Bible says, they find favor and grace with the king. And the king had was pleased. Can you imagine an offer that anybody would consider a nobody? But by reason of the grace of God, the grace was revealed. The grace opened the eyes of the king to see her. And she said, wow, I've never seen this type before. You are best of all the ladies. From today, you are the choice. And the Bible says, the king took the crown and put it on the head of Esther. That is Esther chapter 2 and verse number 17. And from that day forward, the unknown orphan, the so-called slave in the land, the Lord changed her life forever. I pray for every one of you that where you have been despised, the grace of God will announce you. I decree that where the heart of men have not thought that your life will ever reach, the things that eyes have not seen, the things that ears have not heard, I pray that the grace of God will break them forth in your life in the name of Jesus. Those who are making mockery of you right now, those who are talking you down right now, very soon, the grace of God will announce you before them, and all of them will come to honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me round up with this last one today by the grace of God. Looking at a man by name, David, we can't talk about the subject of God's grace in the life of men and forget such a man by name David. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 16, the Bible says, The Lord sent Samuel to the house of Jesse, who was the father of David. As at this time, because David was despised, David was considered a useless boy. David was considered a nobody, maybe because of the circumstances surrounding his birth. 
Because in Psalm 51, verse number 5, David said, Behold, in iniquity was I shapen, and in sin was I conceived. So which means that um, there was certain illegitimate encounter, somehow or maybe between his father and his mother, which resulted in his birth. So I'm sure that this was affecting the relationship between him and every other person in his family house. So they saw him as an object of mistake. They saw his life as a mistake. They saw him as an insult, as an embarrassment to the family. So he was treated so unfairly by those who are supposed to love him. As a proof to that, when Samuel came to the house of Jesse, as the Lord has instructed him to anoint somebody to be the next king of Israel from the household of Jesse, the Bible says Jesse paraded all his wonderful songs. Paraded, oh, Eliah, paraded, Abinadab, paraded. The people he taught are qualified, maybe educational background. They were strong on every side. He felt that some of them were in the military. He felt that these are the guys who can be the king of the nation. But after parading all oh, the seven sons, the Lord did not accept any of them. Samuel said, there's no voice of grace. I want to hear the voice of grace. There's somebody that must manifest grace. This thing can only be given to those who manifest grace because the Bible says, not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit. So the voice of grace must cry behind the life of somebody who will receive this great honor that is coming from the Lord. And he said, where are all your souls? He said, are they finished? He said, we are paraded, but there's one. But maybe he's thinking, if God will not accept this evil, why must God be thinking of that useless boy? He said, but if it's your son, then cut him over. And they said for him, Libra Tosha Gagagalata. The Bible says in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16, from verse 12, from the time David was approaching the house, the voice of grace spoke on the behalf of David. And the Lord said to Samuel, here comes the right person who has found grace with me. Anoint him right now. To be the next king of Israel. And in verse 13, the Bible says, And the Lord anointed David. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward. And from that day, God lost him and commissioned him to be the next king of Israel. What a glorious encounter. What a glorious manifestation of the power of the grace of God. I've come to announce to all of you. Realms that no one has imagined that God's grace is going to launch you in this year 2020, beginning from this one. I don't care what is going on around the world, I don't care what the pandemic is doing, I don't care how things have been slowed down so far because of the pandemic. But I've come to announce to you that no devil can frustrate the manifestation of the power of God's grace. So God said that His grace is coming upon us this season that will cause us to prevail for the remaining days of this year. And as we go through the journey of life. So salivate for it. Be hungry for the grace. Pray for the grace. Ask God to increase the grace. Ask God to manifest his grace. Ask God to provoke the manifestation of his grace in your life. That beginning from this hour, every aspect of your life, we receive the voice and the manifestation of God's grace on every side. In your family, the grace of God will manifest. In the life of your children, the grace of God will manifest. In your finances, the grace of God will manifest. In your marriage, the grace of God will manifest. In your career, the grace of God will manifest. In your health, the grace of God will manifest. Because anytime and anywhere the grace of God begins to manifest, I'm telling you, it will only be from glory to glory. Welcome once again to your season of prevailing grace. Wherever you have been failing, wherever you have been falling, wherever you have been going back, I have come to announce to you that God said that His grace is coming upon you to prevail over all. And every mountain that is standing before you, every barrier that is standing on the way, by the power of the grace of God, I decree that all of them shall be broken down. You know what? As the Lord live it, where you are now will be your least in life. Because the grace of God is lifting you from where you are to the place that the Lord has ordained for you in this year 2020. Therefore, relax and let God's grace come. Cry for it. Ask the Lord to give it to you. Be hungry for it. Seek how to connect it to it. And by the grace of God, beginning from Sunday, which is going to be our next service, I'm going to be speaking to you on how to provoke the manifestation of the grace of God in the life of men and women. And I know that the service shall be a glorious one because now that you know how true, how practical, and how powerful, and how transforming this grace of God can be, I know that every one of us, we should be hungry for it. So by the grace of God, on Sunday, I will be unlocking unto you your master access to the manifestation 
of God's prevailing grace. May the Lord keep you until that time and may He watch over you. May the remaining days of this week be days of blessings and favor unto you. I decree once again that none of you will be a victim of the virus going around. And thank God that we are hearing testimony that the virus is going little by little and as the Lord live it to go finally in the name of God. For every one of you, may the Lord preserve you. May the Lord defend you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord watch over you and your household. Any one of you that is weak in any aspect of your body, I decree the strength of the Almighty God upon you in in the name of God. I declare that beginning from tonight, may the prevailing grace of God upon your life break about miracles and testimonies in the name of God. Be blessed again tonight. Always know that God loves you and pastorate and our leadership of the Triumphant Chapel family, we are praying for every one of you. One thing we know is that at the end of this pandemic, it shall be for a greater testimony. God bless all of you. Have a wonderful day. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Therefore, we are blessed. We are lifted. And we are going higher. 2020, our year of higher level. Our year of higher level, God's grace has prevailed for us. Amen. I'm walking in power.